I need to stop doing these things on the fly and I need to start thinking about ratings in advance. Give me one second. I'm going to calculate. I don't know. Hello and welcome everybody. My name is John Rammel. Today I'm reviewing the book Later by Stephen King. Once again, just something that kind of came at me out of nowhere. I did know that Stephen King was writing a new novel to be released later on in the year. It is a full fat boy, the real deal, like what we're used to from Stephen King. I did not know that he was also writing a little skinny mini book called Later, one of his hard case crimes, which is now three of them. I haven't read any of his hard case crimes yet because they haven't sounded super interesting. It's always one of those things I've heard amazing things about Joyland. And it's always one of those things where I'm like, yeah, I should read those, but I never quite get around to doing it. So, and hard case crimes are, are sold as, they're marketed as, you know, crime novels, you know, hard boiled detective stories, which sound great, but I've just never, you know, once again, back burner. But then this comes out, you know, this is br literally, this is a brand new book. Also, because it's brand new, I will be doing this review completely spoiler free. It, it, it won't be like The Shining where I break it down. Anyway, what was I saying? Back to what I was saying. So anyway, the book comes out and shocks the shit out of me. Like I just, it, it just kind of came out of nowhere for me, which I wasn't keeping up or keeping track. Maybe I should. But anyway, so I go out, I, you know, I run out and then I pick it up and then I have to put it off because I'm doing just too many other things in my life. But then I finally actually get around to reading it. And here we are for a little 250 page book. This was good. And, you know, I was curious, what does Stephen King do with a 250 page book? Because I've read short stories and I've, you know, and and his his fat boys and everything i've never that's kind of a range i'm not used to a, a page range and i was like well oh, so, so is it going to be lacking what's it going to be lacking and it really wasn't lacking anything i was very impressed you know this man never ceases to amaze me he can do anything you know he's like you know what i think i want to write a 250 page book and he does it so so the hard case crimes, a uh, little bit of false advertising, I feel like there, because there's nothing really hard case. There's a detective and there's a crime, but there's nothing hard case crime that, about it as far as what I think of when I think of hard case, hard boiled detective story. I'm, maybe I'm just an idiot, um, but it's got a boy. The little boy and i think that everybody knows this i think you can almost get it from the cover but he the little boy can see dead people a la the sixth sense and it's very self-aware they even make that reference in the book it's one of the very first things that's brought up in like the maybe the first conversation with the little boy about his power and they're like oh like that kid in the movie you know and it's right there in your face. So it's not like it's aware of the fact that it's going to use this mechanic to propel the story. So it wears that on its sleeve and it makes no bones about it. And it's like, people are going to make this connection. So it just makes it for you right off the bat so we can get that out of the way. Cool. But then you're like, okay, so what do we do with this? Well, we do a lot. It's not a lot. It's Ah, boy, it's King and it feels King and it feels King the whole way through. And I really, that's what's actually kind of great about it. And because it's short and it's sweet and it's 250 pages, you could read it in a day. If you're a reader, I took my time. I kind of just kind of pecked away at it over the course of, I don't know, five days or so, better part of a week. And that's reading it very leisurely. But anyway, it's a fast read is what I'm getting at here and it just kind of clips right along and it's really done so well it gets it gives you a mood and an atmosphere and something to kind of hang on to his descriptions are just bar none now next level two in particular that i can think of one an auditory description the way something sounds 
and the way he describes it, you can hear it. And it makes it so much more vivid and alive and right there in your face. So then, anytime he recalls that, and you know he sees a dead person he's like oh and they say this and it and you hear it because and you know what it sounds like and he does it so quickly he in one single description it's probably a sentence and within that one sentence you understand everything you need to understand about that sound and you'll hear it for the rest of the book and it's just to be that good it describes yeah i could probably if i were a writer would probably spend three paragraphs trying to describe the way something sounds and never quite convey to a reader and they would probably be like well i think i get it whereas he one sentence and you're like i know what that sounds like and it's just that or towards the end of the book there's the way the little boy sees something and he describes it once again in a single sentence and you're like i know what that and you immediately that picture's burned into your mind and it's so unique. It's so, I don't know how else to, and I don't want, I wish I could talk about it because it was the coolest thing ever with that one. The visual cue towards the end of the book and the climax and when he describes what something looks like, I was just like, oh. <laughs> it just brought it to life for me and it was so good. Now, I've heard some other reviewers bringing up the fact of how well it, the character, once again, I know I brought up character in my last review, and King is the master of character. I will stand by that till the day I die. Um, but I've heard other reviewers bringing up the character and especially the little boy and how amazing it is that King can write this little boy so well, because he does. It's just masterclass once again in character writing by our boy Stephen King, and he is now in his 70s. And that's another, you know, and people keep bringing it up, and, and I agree, I agree that the gap between a 70-year-old and a six-year-old, when he's writing the six-year-old, and he's writing it such as so well, and they're like, how does a man that old write something that well? But at the same, and I see that, and I agree. And at the same time, I'm going, but this guy's kind of made his whole career off of, writing especially coming of age stories look at stand by me or sorry the body but anyway i would be so more surprised if a 70 year old suddenly forgot how to do something he's been amazing at doing for the past 50 years like that would be more surprising that he just kind of went oh i'm an idiot now i forgot everything i've learned over the past 50 years anyway that's not the point the point is character writing's just so on point and it feels good and it when he writes a, this a six-year-old it feels like a six-year-old or any age that he decides to plug into this particular story because you do get the kid at a couple of different times in his life it kind of grabs a couple of different and it describes a couple of different times in his life and that was fun because it wasn't just you know a story of well we're going to start here and you know and then we're going to tell this story in a three week span those are great too nothing against that but it kind of gives you a couple little nuggets and you're like well that was neat and in all the characters kind of shift around the board as we move forward you know somebody might start here and then we pick up a little bit later and you know you're tracking the boy but there's you know obviously characters around him and they're place in his life and the role that they play at one time versus another time will shift around as it goes you know they might have more influence or less influence or that it's just the dynamics are not always the same when they pick back up at a different time um, and that was interesting and all just so concise because it was held within that 250 pages and it kind of ploop, ploop, ploop. It, like I said, it clips right along. It gets you right to the end and it is very good. Now, speaking of the end, you get there and I know people are, Stephen King can't write an ending. That is so over, I don't know, that's what everyone, it's, that's a complaint. It's a complaint I don't have. Once out of all the books that I've read, I thought, I got to the end and I thought, wow, you kind of botched that one. Like, you just, like, I think he just got done, wrote to the point where he didn't know how to end it. I don't know, that's not the point. But one time, only once and only once, I've been like, hey, I messed that up. But so 
This one isn't that, folks. This is one of the ones where I absolutely loved it because there's going to be a couple of different plot threads. Multiple, that's another thing. It's multiple plot threads following multiple characters through multiple points in time. And it's all housed beautifully in 250 pages. It's just amazing what he did with these, with these short few number of pages anyway. And you get to the end and most things are resolved beautifully, like very satisfyingly resolved. Let's just put it this way. And then, but you get to the end and no, uh, maybe not everything's perfectly resolved for you there at the end. Like, and, and, and there's, ah, I wish I could, I can't. I just, without getting into spoilers, if you have questions throughout the book, you might not get all of the answers. And I mean that in the absolute best way possible, because that made the ending that much better for me, because it didn't, um, it didn't tie the cleanest bow on the end of the story. You're like, oh, that's okay. All right. Um, which made the ending just, just better for me. Okay, so having said all of that, I'm going to jump back just a hair here. If you are a fan of his other work, King has the, the Stephen King multiverse, which all hinges on my bad boy here, the Dark Tower. But it's just always fun when he, he knows what he's doing and everything fits into his multiverse. And this one fits in so well. And there's just a couple of references, but there's a couple of big ones that, can, you know, and some of them come back quite a few times in the story. And for a constant reader, it is just one of the best things to get those things. They're just always being thrown in and I, it's just great. So if you are a constant reader, then you're going to be very satisfied with the content in this book because it's going to be short, sweet, to the point, a fantastic story, and it's going to give you everything you want from the little nuggets of multiverse connections. And who's not here for that? I am. Um, anyway, so Later by Stephen King. I adored it. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. Um, so Later, I'm going to go ahead for right now, first impressions, uh, we're going to go 7.75. I know that's the wonkiest number ever, but I want to give it an eight, but I don't know if that's just because I just got done reading it. So I'm going to go, <laughs> I know this is, ah, anyway, I'm going to go with a 7.75. Like it's real close to an eight, but I'm not sure if I really want to give it a full on eight. So first impressions are hard and I'm new to this. I'm not, let's, let's be honest. I'm just kind of winging it here at this point on some of this stuff. So yeah, we're going to go 7.75 right there. That's definitive. That's never going to change ever, ever. Anyway, so Stephen King later. Have you read it yet? If you haven't, go pick it up. It's a quick read. I promise you'll like it. It'll be fast. It'll be done. It'll be over with. It's got all the little sprinkles that you need. Um, might not be the best thing you've ever read, but I tell you, it will definitely be a good time. If you have read it, by the way, let me know what you thought about it because I would love to know. Uh, I don't care if you hated it. Let me know that you hated it. That's fine. Uh, anyway, so everybody, this has been great. It's been fun. It's been real. Um, <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.